Hey guys, Alex here, and my four of the Marguerite Deluxe Booster Course Pass just released. You know what that means. As usual, I'm going to be taking a look at each of the new courses released and going over why I like and didn't like that as much. So, this is just my opinion, and you might disagree with me, because that's just how the world works. Also, I want to preface this by saying I did have a lot of fun with this wave, but keep that in mind as I will be very critical in this video. And yeah, alright, with that being said, let's go! Anyway, starting it off is the Fruit Cup. Mmm, yummy. Or Amsterdam Drift. I like this course. Sure, there's definitely a lot of generic city stuff. There's a lot of interesting sections that keep entertaining. For example, this underwater section, with the, which is kind of blank, but popping out of the water to trick off these ships is kind of fun. Or this flower field that looks kind of ugly. Still, there are some really good sections, like the third lap where you go backwards, or this windmill section that feels just out of Daisy Hills. It also suffers from an issue that plays a plagues a lot of other tourist tracks. Shark turn syndrome. Like, what the heck? I was expecting a descaling in difficulty. I mean, some of these are practically impossible. Still, despite its shortcomings, I think what more than makes up for it is its aesthetic. Man, this track just makes me happy. I love the whole atmosphere this town has. I mean, the windmills, the town area, and the weird underwater section all combined for just a nice cozy vibe. Another thing that carried me through the course was the music. I mean, you can't go wrong when your main instrument it's just... It gives me this nice Northern European party vibe, and just really great. Another strength of this course is that it's just fun. Sure, it might not be as interesting as tracks coming up, but still a fun time. Overall, this track is pretty good. Definitely one of my favorites so far, although this is only the first track. Anyway, moving on to GBA Riverside Park. This one's decent. For stars, the course looks visually good. I don't know, I like the jungle vibe here. I may be biased because I tend to gravitate toward jungle areas in video games. Also, Patooies, those are pretty cool. The music is also a banger. The main addition for this was adding more elevation as they've done many times before. And it's alright, I don't just don't feel as appreciative when literally every GPA remaster is doing something like that. The layout itself is just kind of too simple and short to really get much out of it, which is fine. It's a fun simple track and every wave needs a more simple track. But this wave had like, three. Anyway, moving on to Wii DK Summit. I'm a bit mixed on the visuals here. <laughs> has that poor plastic look, but it's kind of hard to notice, especially since the gameplay is engaging enough to not really care about the graphics. It's a fun time and the half pipes are almost as fun as we. Another cool thing to know is that they brought back the DK Summit jump. This was a massive ultra shortcut from Mario Kart Wii. I have far from mastered it and probably never will. Still, even if I can't do it, it's still really fun flying through the air only for lack of you to pick you off the side of the mountain. But yeah, besides that, it plays exactly like Mario Kart Wii and is still great fun. Although, I wish that they placed these stands a bit farther away because, uh, this is kind of bad. But yeah, DK Summit. You know what else is good? It's music. They take a more rock-themed approach with this song, and I, while I see why people don't like the new take, I absolutely love it. Ending it off is, though, is a brand new course, Yoshi's Island, based off Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Island is actually really cool. First of all, the visuals here are awesome. There's so many colors, especially the background, it just pops off with how much color there is. We have these big monster heads, a colorful sky, and Poochie, my boy! The course itself has you go for a variety of locations, and honestly, each could be their own track. Also gotta give props to the Shy Guy on stilts. This is very funny, and easily one of humanity's greatest creations. Right, there's like hundreds, so uh... And yeah, it's just so fun going through this course, and the course just makes me happy, which is a common theme with all the Fruit Cup tracks. Only complaint I have is that I just kinda wanted more, which isn't much of a critique of the course itself, but is an indication of a good course. 
Also, the music remix the athletic theme from the original game, which ironically enough, I'm nostalgic of. Not because of the original game, heck no, but because of the use that song in total drama, Roblox. And I don't know, I like that game as a 12 year old. That's kind of embarrassing. Anyway, before we get into the final four tracks, they actually made some changes to the game once again. This time we have a new character, Birdo. I I've expressed my thoughts on this before, but my thoughts come down to, okay, cool, but why? A minor nitpick that I'll enforce into your brain is that the naming scheme is different. See, for, with, for example, Yoshi, it's Blue Yoshi or Yellow Yoshi, but this one is Birdo parentheses Blue or Yellow. Also, these alternate colors look really ugly. Why do, why do they look like that? Still, the possibilities for new characters are crazy. We're getting five more of these, and brings me a little hope that Wiggler will be added. But no, it'll probably be replaced by something stupid like Peach Out or Baby Pink Gold Rosalina. They also did a bit of meta changes. I don't want to go in depth because I'm not exactly the greatest at this stuff, but in short, a bunch of characters were buffed, which basically replaced a bunch of weird combos which, with a bunch of weirder combos. I don't really care since Donkey Kong Scooty is just epic, but Inkling Bar Boy Cat Cruiser is an alternate option if I want to get more meta. Also, while Wigglers aren't apparently OP anymore, so yeah, just this for Wiggler. Anyway, starting off the Boomerang Cup, we have Bangkok Rush, and to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of this one. There's some cool sections here, like this big glider section, the smart curtain jump, mushroom gorge jump thing, and the ship section at the start is cool, and Kung Fu Lakitu 2, yo! But besides the memorable sections, it's honestly just a generic city. Like, yeah, there's some cool visual changes in, like, the background and such, but they don't really leave much of an impact for me. Also suffers from sharp turn syndrome, which I mentioned earlier. Granted, this one isn't as bad, but an issue nonetheless. Overall, Bangkok Rush is kind of an underwhelming track. Hopefully, Nintendo does better in the next race. I spoke too soon. Yes, Mario Circuit. This one was a really basic one. The turns are fun and the background is cool, I guess. But man, why did they have to do this to us? Gosh dang it. It's really just a basic circuit and it's alright. I don't know, I think the Wiggler is cool, I guess. GCN Wally G Stadium. Wow, I haven't seen that in a while. GCN Wally G Stadium. This one's fine, I guess. It's still a cool track layout-wise, but playing on it feels so corporate. There's not much personality to it. It just feels so lifeless. I mean, take these signs from the original and Wii versions, which moved around and vibe to the beat, and are just for a place with generic guardrails. Also, just generally, it doesn't feel as fun to play as the Wii version. With the Wii version, you are wagging the remote around and just having a good time. But this one, I mean, I would use my Joy-Cons, but they're the Joy-Cons, you'll have no joy using them. In terms of visuals, they upgrade this one immensely, but in doing so, took out some of the personality of it, partially the fun of it. It's still a great dose of fun, I hate to sound cliche, but it's just not the same. The music is good on its own, but a sped up version will fit a whole lot better for this race. I mean, just take a listen. Anyway, wrapping it off is poor Singapore Speedway, and gosh dang it, this one's awesome. And it really just comes down to two things. Firstly, it's just fun to race through, which is something that almost all these tracks know, but this track just may be the funnest. There's also a ton of variety, at least in me. I mean, you think you're racing, then five seconds later you're on a fighter section, then boom, Goombas with floaties, awesome, and then another gl big glider section, and that's just the first lap. The other two laps don't disappoint either. We have Chinatown, these arrow sections that should have been literally anti-gravity, and a bunch of glider sections. I love my gliders! Also, the music is a banger, just take a listen.
the visuals here could could be better, but it's definitely one of the more beautiful tracks in the DLC thus far. But yeah, Singapore Speedway is really great. Hopefully the next few tour tracks will be good. Anyway, that's all my thoughts for today. Here's my overall ranking for the wave. Number 8, DS Mario Circuit. Number 7, Four Bangkok Rush. Number 6, GCN Waluigi Stadium. Number 5, GBA Riverside Park. Number 4, Tori Amsterdam Drift. Number 3, We Day K Summit. Number 2, Tour Singapore Speedway. And number 1 is Yoshi's Island. N no surprises there, right? Overall, this wave was okay, I guess. As a whole, I'd say this is the best wave. But none of the tracks really reached the highs of Wave 3 for me. I definitely had a lot more to say than both the Wave 2 and Wave 3 videos. But again, I did have a ton of fun with this Wave. Anyway, I'm hoping for 3S Warrior Shipyard to be in the next Wave. Heck, I even started a petition 